Hi, I'm Russ Camarda, an independent filmmaker and actor in New York, and in between the chances I get to do my creative projects, I love to sit down and talk with other artists to see how it is they do what they do, how they take art and use their craft to reveal truth to an audience. So in this series of conversations, you'll meet some people you may recognize, some people you won't recognize, but they're all independent artists and we'll get in depth in a long form conversation to see how it is they do what they do. Welcome to Art Craft Truth. This conversation is an interesting one to me because it explores an art form I know absolutely nothing about, dance. Oya Bangura is a dancer and choreographer, originally from Africa, came to this country as a child, studied with the National Dance Institute, the Alvin Ailey Dance Theater. She's going to explain to us how dance and movement reveal truth to an audience. Her story is an interesting one, and I hope you enjoy it. Very cool. We're rolling. All right. Hey, how you doing? Good. All right. <laughs> it's good to be indoors. So, uh, let me get the name right first. It's Oya Bangura. That is correct. correct? Oh, oh, awesome. All right. So, before we even start, all right, this is a special one because you come courtesy of uh, of my buddy Ed Uther, <laughs> and Ed is Ed Ed Uther has started. Uh, he's helped me with every one of these podcasts just as a helping hand because he has a uh, a company similar to mine. Right. Um, but he's really become like a producer now. He's going out and getting guests. He's he's cutting things. So management. So all for of that. for those who are watching, uh, Ed's Ed's company is Id Unleashed. I D. Unleashed, id unleashed, like the id, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so Ed, thank you so much, my friend. Let's give Ed a nice round of applause. Ed is the man for all your uh, video production needs. Check out Id Unleashed, and uh, I can't thank him enough for for everything he's done and, and continues to do. He's a good human, very good human. He is good, and yeah. and uh, and how does how does how do you know Ed? Where do you guys? Oh gosh, um, Ed, I I don't even know what year. <laughs> what year, Ed? Uh, I don't even know what year. Probably. Five, six years now? No, it's even longer than that. Is it? Yeah. I came on the scene, I think, here in Long Island about like 2010 mm -hmm. uh, with one of the dance studios. And like you were you were already there. You were like okay. there right. and then like the different middle schools. Sure, and sure, sure. It's like yeah. just everywhere. Everywhere I went, I was like, hey, I know that guy. Yeah, Ed, Ed gets around. <laughs> yeah. Ed gets around. So, uh, so all right, let's start. Let's let's get right into it. Um, this is exciting for me because I, I've had a bunch of different kinds of artists on the on the podcast, um, but I have had no dancers. Really? No dancers yet. You're my first dancer. So oh, I'm very excited because it's something. Wow. Yeah, I am not even, uh, it's an alien okay. uh, uh, position to me. Um, so before we get into the craft of it, uh, let's get into your story just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, you were born in Africa, is that correct? Yes, so, Sierra Leone, West Africa. So how how old were you? How long did you uh, live there? And I came here in 79. So I was about five years old when I came here. Okay. Um, been here ever since. So, uh, so do you have memories of that time, or were you a little bit? Little yeah. Bit? yeah, my um, my parents took my brothers and I to the the village where my grandmother was, um, to live for the last like the six months before we moved here, just so we would have some sort of an imprint. Okay. Uh, so I remember you know being in the village and spending time with her and like the animals and like I had a little monkey like all these. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, so those those memories are are dear. Are dear. Wow. Um, but other than that, it's more just connection here taking care of our family there right um, right yeah and were you uh were you always artistically inclined all the way from little little yeah well my, i actually found out once i started having an inclination towards dance and theater that my grandmother was an, was a dancer and she would go from village to village in my country and like she would perform wow they actually have a name for it sangaju which is not a very nice name um she had children but what she wanted to do and what she really, really, like her heart was set on was performing. So she would leave her kids with the family and literally go village to village to different parties and like host dances. Wow. Yeah. I was just like, so. What's the, what's the word? Sangaju. And what does that mean? It's really like, hmm, I'm trying to. Be tactful set, now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just I'm being <laughs> very tactful. Very tactful. It's a, um, a, let's say a loose woman. Oh, okay. I got you. All right. Loose woman. And that's just because she liked just performing. Be, that's it. She just, that's what she wanted to do with, with her life. She just wanted to, to dance. She wanted to perform. Like that's wow. what she wanted to do. So she went to village, to village, to village, to village, village. So it's in the genes. Yeah. There's no way around it. Absolutely. So, but when do you discover it as a kid? Um, what, well, for me it was, gosh, it's not actually a very nice story, but, um, when I was about five years old, um, the school that I went to, they had ballet, and I just kind of like walked 
into it waiting for the bus. I was like, I just walked into it. And my mom allowed me just to kind of sit in the class. And I was like, ooh. So I started doing that. So then she would take me there. The teacher was not the best. Mm. Like she was not uh, someone that was kind to uh, a black person okay. in terms of dance. Um, ballet at that point, I remember her words were, you'll never be a ballerina because of your butt. And, and yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And I, from then on, I was like anti-dance, anti-ballet until about, I want to say eight, nine years old. My brother joined a company in New York City that came into public schools. Okay. And um, he started dancing and I was like wondering like, why. Like he just would be so joyful. Mm. And then um, at a certain age, um, my grade was able to have that company um, uh, visit. And so then I auditioned for it and I started dancing with them and I absolutely 100% fell in love. The <laughs> teacher was just like, you're amazing. Look at those high knees. Right. Like, you know, just all the things that you wouldn't expect. Right. Um, and so that's when I fell in love about like eight, nine years old. Well, it's uh, interesting because, and we're going to get into this because you are a teacher now as mm -hmm. well, uh, that, and I've got this on some other podcasts with other people that the, the encouragement yes. makes a big difference when those instructors <sighs> encourage you, it changes your perspective on, on how it goes. But isn't that the same for, for all artists? Absolutely. Right? So those are, those early yeah. teachers are, are very important. The ones that go, Hey man, you don't have it. To the ones that go, look at that high stepping. Oh, that's great. Ooh. All right, so so eight or nine mm -hmm. is when you're starting to really, you're encouraged. You're you're. What kind of dancing is it originally? I mean, you started ballet. You didn't like that, but what kind of stuff are you doing when you're in, excited about it? Well, with this particular company, it was more about reaching the 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 students that were from like the underserved uh, sure. uh, neighborhoods. So you're not going to reach them with ballet. You're not going <laughs> right. to reach, right? It's foreign to them. Right. It's foreign to them. So what this company did was just that learning. Instead of tendus, they have a specific way of teaching a tendu. Okay. Um, Explain. All right. You're talking to a complete This is layman. foreign. I know. Okay. I know. So a ballet tendu, you point your toe forward and then you slide it back. Okay. Um, and, but this company, their time do is you lift your knees, same thing, forward. You lift your knees up high and you put it down in front of you. So if you think of a clock, okay, 12 o'clock and then here, right. you lift your knees up and you put your foot down, you lift your knees up and you put it back down. Okay. Um, and it's more the gauge of success is how high can you get this student to get their knees up? How, mm. how, how straight can you get the student to... Uh, to get their elbows. Right. How crispy can you get the fingers? And I'm using these words. Sure. These are the words that they actually right. use. And that's the gauge of success. And why is that more accessible than uh, the other? Ba what, what was Not every, not every, well, being a flat-footed person <laughs> and a lot of, some Native Americans also flat-footed, being able to stretch your toes or have beautiful feet is something that ballerinas are supposed to have. Uh, we don't all have right. the high arches. Gotcha. So we have to work extra hard for that. Interesting. So finding a way uh, where your own body is your friend and not your enemy, and you're not being told that's this is beautiful and this is ugly. Wow. So that was that was it. Just being told, oh, that look look how high her knees. Oh, can you get your knee up high? And right. and, and that was the fun. And then the students are looking at each other like, I can get my knee up higher. Uh -huh. Yeah, me too. So right. so yeah, that just that just the 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 positive reinforcement yeah. of it. Uh, so what is it? We'll get into as you get older what it what it is for you. But at that point, what is it about that art form that was the most attractive? Like, why didn't you become a painter or a music or what? You know, what was it you about? You don't ever want to see me paint. <laughs> Ooh, you don't ever. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll try it. Right. But what was it about the movement? <laughs> um, that the, the music. The it honestly it was the teacher. It it it's not. It wasn't even about the dance. It was the teacher told telling me. Um, that I could do whatever it was. The mm. teacher's belief in me told me that I could do it. If a teacher told me that I could paint, I would believe it, right. and then I'd be a painter. Like, that's that's what it right. was about, which is why, of course, now I'm a teacher. Right. <laughs> so, But later on, then it became, oh, wait a minute. There's more to just the high knees and the straight right. elbows and the crispy fingers. Right. So they catch you with that first. <laughs> and then they rope you into, then I started taking ballet classes. Okay. And then I started taking jazz classes and tap classes and, and, and right. on and on and on. Now, early on, is there a particular one that... That's... My favorite was tap. Tap. Ha oh, oh, my favorites. Still Why? to this day, secretly, a lot of people don't even know. What but is it's my it, favorite. What is it about? The rhythms, and it's not even. It's 
tap is not dance. It's actually communication. Like mm. you're communicating. The same with West African dance, which is my specialty. Okay. Um, the drumming. The fact that you're making, you're, you're communicating with your body. You're communicating with your feet. Mm. You're communicating and, and having a conversation. Um, tap is just, it, it's, I think, the hardest also because anyone who is a tapper can see what you're doing. Even if there's a lot of like music and noise covering it up, they can see and they'll let you know, like you missed a tap. Like mm. They can tell. Um, and it's the type of thing you're just so connected because you can feel it running through your body right oh it's, it's it's amazing did you have heroes other than the teachers that you had but did, oh were, were you exposed to you know yes the the, the greats and all that stuff? yes yes i got to perform actually with um, a couple of them and one of them still alive who, who uh, we went to school together save young glover um really yeah and he he actually was the one who gave me an aha moment and he's, he's been a talented person um and a, just a very deep philosophical person about tap since he was young mm. um and that's where the conversation about tap is not just a dance people teach it as a dance and it's not it's not it's not just a technique it is literally a way of life language yeah. it is a language it's the way you communicate um you don't have to to learn a falap if you're home and you don't have taps you take your sneaker and you falap do you know what i mean it's, right. it's that accessible what's a falap falap <laughs> you take this See, is your this is the stuff you it's okay do. this is the ball of your foot okay you up and then you put it back down. okay a full lap, lap. That's, and it makes a sound yeah. full lap <laughs> <laughs> so 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 you said you you went to school together is how did we, we were in you junior high school together no east kidding. Harlem performing arts no kidding his ninth grade year was my eighth grade year wow the craziest thing was we did um a snippet of uh, this show called I'm getting my act together and taking it on the road. And I had to play his dance teacher. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so like, to this day, you're going to say, I'm Tavion. I was like, um, this is crazy. He's like the tap dance kid. He, like wow. literally at that time, I was like, this is insane. Wow. Um, but yeah, I, I owe, I owe a lot of, um, my later, uh, passion for tap to definitely to save And he also introduced me to different underground places in, um, uh, down uh, West 42nd Street back then, back in junior high and like high school where we would go and like the old school tappers were still ah, using cool. these spaces and stuff like Cookie Cook and, and uh, Sandman Sims. Like, mm -hmm. I, and, and, I just, and I had no idea what I was actually walking into until later on. I'm like, oh my God. Wow. Oh my God. Like I was like, oh my God. Like this is amazing. Wow. So, so yeah. So what so... As you're getting out of childhood, you, you, it was it a performing arts school that you mm -hmm. went to? So, so what was the, what's that experience like? Now you're in with all kinds of other people who are who are just like me who are doing yeah they're yeah. What's but that before about? that, I was with National Dance Institute. That oh, was, that's right. Yes, right. But that that was the family that introduced me to again not just the love of dance but just the love of self. Like I was discovering who I was. Okay. Um and and what I wanted to do with the rest of my life at right. the age of like eight, nine, and 10 years old. And this is and the, and NDI. The, NDI. National. Mm -hmm. So what, how do you get involved in that? How, the, they, they still to this day, they go into schools and they audition students, um, grade levels. I think usually it, it's about fourth and fifth grade. They come into the school, they audition you, and it's built into the school system where for 40 minutes that one of the grade levels will come in and work with a teacher and a live musician live music <laughs> a teacher and a live musician right. and they for 40 or 45 minutes they work on a dance mm. uh, later on what happens is there's like a mid-year show and then there's an event of the year so all of these schools that have an ndi teacher and a musician in it they all get together um I, well my my year they all got together and we performed all of the different dances that we learned at the felt forum, um, Madison square. Garden. Oh, how cool. Is so that? like thousands of students from everywhere, Jersey, uh, <laughs> Harlem, Brooklyn, Queen, you wow, name it. It wow. was amazing. And they still do it now though. It's, it's wow. a lot smaller in scale, but it's just as effective. The, the pedagogy, it's just as effective. And it's what's the wonderful. experience like as a little kid? Oh. With all that? I mean, were you like, were you struck by Absolutely it? Absolutely struck by it. Amazed. Um, again, not knowing what I was actually a part of until much later, I started mm. teaching for them and then realizing that's what they were teaching. Oh, aha, you right. know, 
Um, what was that realization? Oh my god! What did you realize? I mean, we'll go back. We're, we're going to jump yeah, around the timeline yeah. here, but what? What was that realization? Well, well, uh, they have a two week teacher training um, where you're you're not sitting at a desk and learning about this is how you teach. Okay. This is the technique. Mm -hmm. You're actually working with students and okay. you're learning hands on how to teach right. their pedagogy. And once I got into the two week teacher training to work for them, I, I was like, oh, this is why they did this. Mm. So specifically a lot of teachers want their classroom to to be you need to come in and you need to listen to me you need to make eye contact and when i say beautiful feet you show <laughs> and does that work for everyone does that right, work for any artist right, yeah. no so it's this child responds to this right. and this child is going to respond to your those are high knees, but look at those fingers, mm, you know? So correct. it's like trying to encourage the things you do see in each child. Sure. So, and I always wondered why it was that it was the person to the right of me had better elbows, right, let's just right. say, and I was always picked for the higher knees or right, the higher, right. you know, it's just, just sort of like just that. Tr treating everybody like an individual exactly. and playing their strengths and exactly. emphasizing their strengths. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. Perfect. All right. So, um, so, I you know I saw a clip. Ed sent me a clip uh, when you were a kid of Dancing with Mary Tyler Moore. That was NDI. That was NDI, right? Yeah. So what yeah. was that about? It was a television thing for it was a 50th anniversary of something. Well, am I wrong? No, it, that, oh, was that was that was the felt form. That was the felt form. That was I think my first felt form show um, with Madison uh, um, with NDI. NDI has they have a lot of uh, people who are invested in helping st students mm -hmm. to. Um, to learn about the arts. So not just dance. They learn about theater. They learn about right. music, classical music. Um, they, uh, Harry Belafonte is one of the people who every single year has helped to like sponsor a school. Wow. And it's the only way that it works. It's a not-for-profit, right. right? So um, uh, there's people who come in and they'll just adopt a class. Sure. Um, and that's the only way they can survive. So Mary Tyler Moore was that year happened to be someone who was like, yeah, I'll help out. Oh, you want me to perform too? Sure. You know? <laughs> and it was like, okay, this is great. Cloris wow. Leachman was another one. Anne Rankin. Wow. Um, that's so cool. like Alec Baldwin, I believe sits on the board. So just all these right. people who are invested in, uh, not so much like putting their names out there, but like, what can I do to help? Right. Like, how do I reach you? And as a kid, are you aware of, not you didn't really not a clue didn't know what was going on not a clue not a clue, right? not a clue but it was fun it was absolutely fun it was wow. just, it was and the people were wonderful you know yeah. so it wasn't oh do you know who that is it yeah, was nothing right. like that it was just like oh you're gonna dance with this lady oh cool wonderful how you doing cool you know so it's mary tyler Moore. yeah yeah no idea that's no fantastic idea. None. so um so as you get older how long you how long do you dance in that in, in NDI, like how, how long are you part of, is that like a whole lifetime kind of thing? Or like, how I does wish. That, how does that work? Oh, I wish. Um, I think after junior high, junior my, high. it just so happened my junior high uh, school was also part of NDI. So I was able to stretch my, uh, my time with them from uh, eight, nine, nine years old till almost high school. Okay. Right. So I went to East Harlem Performing Arts and they were part of NDI. And then when I went to high school, that's when it was, okay, I'll come back as an alumni and help. Uh, I'll, so, I'll come back and volunteer. Right. And that's usually what we do. So it was, a, it was a performing arts high school that you went to? I went to, actually, I went to all girls boarding school. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There's an experience. Wellesley, Mass. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were top three at the point for performing arts and like their dance program was phenomenal. Uh, their theater program was phenomenal. And that's actually, even though I was always involved in theater and acting, that was where I actually fell in love with the craft of acting. Like, ah, good. Then we can I, talk about that as well. Oh, my gosh. I meshed the two together there. It was, it was It was amazing. So, yeah. So that was, uh, that was Dana Hall. That was Wellesley Mass. <laughs> Wellesley Mass. Yes. Dana so, Hall. so what do you, as you're getting older, do your tastes change? You know, uh, as you're growing through high school, I mean, you, you still love tap and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Where, where, at, where, at what point does the, the West African, which is now your specialty, are you always... You're, is that, you're good. Like, no joke. This, at Dana Hall. Okay. <laughs> Dun -dun -dun. See? I'm paying attention. <laughs> Sometimes I get it right. <laughs> it was at Dana Hall. Okay. It was at Dana Hall. Um, I... I I used to, and I'm going to be very candid, I used Please. to, because of 
the experience um, with ballet, it, it always stems back to that. It, it, no, it no joke served a lot of how I navigated life and Absolutely. the arts. And, you know, am I welcome in classical, in the classicals? Am I welcome in theater? You know, mm. and I didn't ever feel welcome until I went to East Hall Performing Arts. They introduced me to black American and I, I say this sure. because I, it's just culture. Yeah. I believe it's just culture. Right, right. right. They introduced me to black American writers and um, playwrights. Um, and I was, I, I, and, and then also allowed me to play parts that I shouldn't play. Um, like I had the starring role in The Secret Garden and I had to, <laughs> you know, I had to put on a British accent, right, right. you know, things like that. And uh, um, so that was interesting for me to see that, oh, well, maybe I, maybe I can't. So at Dana Hall, I was able to play parts that I shouldn't play. Right. I was cast in roles that I shouldn't have been <laughs> cast in. Um, and then they started saying, hey, listen, you're good enough uh, to choreograph. Why don't you choreograph a show? And I was like, wait a minute. So just there were some little snippets of encouragement there. How old were you at this point? I was, oh, this was six high school so 16 17, 17 you're gonna choreograph your first show I choreographed the whiz yeah <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah um but before that my dance teacher a white woman rebecca rice flanagan love that lady um she introduced me to a love of modern dance at, at dana hall and she is i mean she's she is a ballet based human right. um and gave me the love of that in at Dana Hall, okay. like really learning the, the technique with love. Okay. Um, but then she also brought in outside masters. She brought in Adrian Hawkins, um, who at 40 years old, she, um, and I'll never forget the story. She was a black woman, 40 years old. She'd gone to law school and she decided to take a, a dance class and quit law school <laughs> and went back in, got a degree in dance, opened up her own company mm -hmm. and successful. Right. Um, she gave us a master class in, in West African, you know, dance. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I guess I'm supposed to be good at this. <laughs> right. And, and I'd had, I'd had, of course, some experience. And so my grandmother, you know, like just right. in life, I'd had experience, you know, dancing sure. through my culture, but this was permission to, openly be okay with sure, dancing right. it with other white girls and like filipinos and <laughs> asian girls just openly we're allowed to just have fun and right. it was an epiphany for me it was a right. oh, i think this is something that we can actually connect to and it made sense with the drumming and then also with the tapping and like all of right. that so, stuff so there's a again there's a language to the rhythm of it that it's just it's talking we communicate yeah, and we right. communicate it's, and it's here. Like right. I remember just putting your hand over your heart and all of us feeling and hearing our own heartbeat mm. and then <laughs> starting just with that, you wow. know, starting just with that and how profound that was for me because we didn't have to do anything else that day. Right. It was just, just this together. Boom, 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 boom. Da -ding, da -ding. Ta -ta 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 -ta. The, and then your body starts doing things, right, right. you know, so just that. And like the girls who were extremely balletic, I remember seeing them like, kind of go, like, I'm going to be good at this. And then they're looking at me like, I'm going to be this too. You know, like it was, <laughs> yeah, it was right. just, everyone let their hair down, you That's know, awesome. it was just freedom. That's it was freedom. Awesome. So yeah. That was so from that moment. moment on that, now that's, I was sold. You were sold on that. Yeah, I was sold. Um, so what's, so let's get back to this kid who's, who gets the the wheel, the steering wheel to choreograph? Like, how fun was that? What was it? What was that about? Insane. It was crazy. And did you know? Did, did you know what to do? Did you, did you? Had you going with a plan? Because well, we'll get into how you do things now. But mm -hmm. as a kid, do you had any any idea how to do that? Well, coming from East Harlem Performing Arts, where we had dance in our day, we had music in our day, and music theory. Sure. Um, having drama and drama theory, we had days where we also had to, you know, um, to create our own works. So yeah, some of our, I created some of my own solos right. or some duets, you know, small group things, never an entire production. <laughs> 
So um, did I know what to do in on a mini scale? Right. Um, but then also at Dana Hall, it's it, we spent a lot of time in the dance room. Mm. So I was never afraid to ask, um, you know, Rebecca Rice or or my other modern teacher, Andy Taylor Blennis, like ask them, like, what, like I'm not sure what, what to do here. Right. Um, so asking questions. So no, I had no idea. <laughs> none whatsoever. None. So as you go through, what's the highlight of, uh, of this time of your life, of when, when you're back there, what, before you get out of school? What, what was the... What's the triumph that you can remember or any uh, special things that occurred during mm. that time? Oh, there was, there, uh, there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of turmoil there, I have to say. And the okay. only, the only saving grace and connection for me was being in the dance space, being so in the theater. So turmoil in your life part. In my life. And also just being, we were out of 300 and maybe 60 something students, that's middle school all the way to high school. Mm -hmm. There were maybe eight Latinos and 12 black students, um, 12, yeah, black students, um, many international students. And Wellesley Mass, I, I mean, <laughs> is old yeah, money. That is right. Right? Old, right. old money. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd walk, I'd walk old into white, Wellesley. Old white money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Should Thank you for sparing. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm going to clarify that for you. Thank you. Um, I'd walk into Wellesley and, and like, I, I felt like I was on display, you Interesting. know, just walking, just walking. Um, and it was weird because coming from New York City right. um, and I used to live like near the um, the UN because my, my, my we came here. My dad was a, a diplomat. We okay. came here. Uh, so we lived amongst, you know, white people and international people. Sure. So. Over and then moved and then Murray moved to Hill Harlem. The, the, we yeah, were yeah. we were yeah, well Beekman Hill. Beekman Hill, Beekman. right, right. And then um moving to Harlem later on, you know, for junior high school and everything, that was a culture shock. Coming to Wellesley was the biggest <laughs> culture shock because that's when I actually realized I was black. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. Like that's when I realized I was black. I had never had any issue um in well, terms of that I realized. If I you're say. comfortable talking about what makes you realize that what's the what's the what's the it was the first time i'd ever had the um the n-word thrown at me in school um it was out of school okay. well that's the thing it's yeah, all right. girls boarding right, right so where we live on campus you know sure. right, people can just kind of drive through and right. screaming wow. at me get out of wellesley and get out of wellesley as i'm like hanging out with my six foot three white boyfriend <laughs> in front of where my where my dorm is where i live right um wow so that and and just being in like what what did that just happen in right. front of my house this is like my third year here wow. you know so the um but also a lot of other things happened in that school like like swatsikas um oh interesting where they're just popping up and i'm like what's happening mm. Like, what's happening? And being affected by that, even though it has nothing to do with me, it still has something to do with me. Yeah, sure. Um, and what Dana Hall was great about was being able to have, like, a town hall meeting about certain things like right. that, but then no follow through. Right, right. So feeling oh. as if, yeah, we're going to address this, but we're not going to really address this. Mm. So going into the theater or into dance was the solace for a lot of right, us. Being able to, right, being able to use our craft, um to create a response. So instead of sitting with and get out of Wellesley, I created a piece instead um, called Spirit, I remember, uh, that used all of my sisters, like used, and when I say sisters, I mean all of my sisters, sure, right, period, right. Um, uh, to respond to that hatred. And um, then I created like a, just, just responding using art, responding using right. art, responding using art, and asking some of like the the visual artist to create a piece like a backdrop or something for right. some of the stuff mixing mediums um well this is a great uh this is a great topic uh, that we can get into is uh uh and i've talked about this with other folks on the on the show is that uh is the role that uh the arts have in breaking the bubbles these echo chambers that are forming in the world now because of technology and everything else everybody's listening to everybody who sounds like themselves mm -hmm. and staying in these little bubbles and here in this conservatory experience, you're forced in that solace space to deal with 
the Filipinos and the whites and the Hispanic and, and create art together yeah. and communicate physically, uh, visually, you know, auditorially, you know, you, you, it's, it's, it's something that I think people miss mm -hmm. that that's the way out yeah. for a lot of us now. The it's way the, in. In the way in and the way out of this, this mess that, that we're in. I agree. Um, and, and particularly that the, um, the, the way the craft is being presented to you at this place is different than that first ballet teacher, you know? Yeah. There's a loving, inclusive thing that has to be supported when you're instructing, when exactly. you're bringing somebody into the craft. And I think that's what was going on there, right? I'm like, yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely, I mean, like administration, no. The actual... <laughs> Right. I mean, I have to be honest, and I think that's just the way it is even out here. It's a reflection. Sure. Right? And as artists, I mean, I don't, I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll yeah. speak for... Sure. Um, I, I think what you, you were talking about before, I think it for me, it is my responsibility sure. as an artist. It is my responsibility to find a way in to connect with everyone. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm going to change your mind, right. but I think it is my respons responsibility to present a different something to you right. to figure out how I can do that. That's right. for me. Right. Others would say, no, it's not my job. You need to do the work. That's mm -hmm. great. And I honor that. But for me, I, I, I know that my spirit speaks to a lot of people and I feel like it would be a disservice if I didn't use that superpower right. um, for good. <laughs> well, let's, let's talk about that specifically uh, in, in the craft framework. So, um, I believe that too. I believe that, that the, the role of the artist is to take, you know, this, uh, unseen spirit, channel it through yourself in through a craft and then reveal it to other people mm -hmm. truthfully so that they can feel the same way, feel the same and connect on a special way. So actors do it one way, musicians do it another way, painters, sculptors to feel the same way, what, to feel, to feel th that thing okay. that, that is unspoken. Okay. That can't be described by just. You know, you're crafting it in a way that they feel the truth of it and in themselves. Okay. Where, you know, it, you could see it. You can't, you can't touch it. Right. But you're making it manifest for them to experience it. So all these different craftsmen, all these different artists do it in different, with different techniques. What do the, what does the dancer do? Like, what is that? How are you getting in with that? What do you think that is? Well, for me, it's not just through dance. Okay. Like I, I, I have to. Um, use everything. <laughs> right, right. So um, I but connect. Let's 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 let's, let's folk narrow it down just for that because I am really fascinated by this particular craft, which is alien. To by me. dance. By dance, because I I really don't understand it. So, what is what in the act of of using that art form do you think gets in? Is it the physical mood, like engaging others in? Like what is it? Well, well, again, I can't speak to just specifically dance okay. because I because I've. I teach um, dance also is with your face, mm -hmm. right? So there has to be acting involved. Sure. Um, there has to be a connection there. Um, and I th and you touched upon it. It's the being able to use your body, the expression in your body to, um, to tell a story, mm. right? Um, so there, there has to be the acting and the dance moving. Right. We do, um, in my dance classes, we talk about... Um, if you're not using your face when you're dancing, you're a dead dancer. Mm, right. The audience does not connect. Right. Your technique can be fabulous. Your, your movements can be perfection. But if your face says nothing right. or nobody's, mm -hmm. nobody's here. Right. So that's why I keep saying like, sure, I have to absolutely. use. But yes, it's, it's the movement. It's the movement telling the story. Right. It's the movement um, begging the audience to come in. Mm. It's the movement pulling the audience to come in. Right. It's also um, one of the things I tell the dancers is your job is to make them want to get up on stage and dance with you. That right. is your job. Right. I don't care how you do it, but your job is to figure out whatever I've given you. Well, how are you going to like mold that into your own so that that a particular person sitting in row A, mm -hmm. that front row or in row Z. Right. How is Rosie going to move down through those seats and jump up on stage? Like that's, right. that's your job. How are you going to do it? Right. Well, I, I, I think that's fascinating. And, and 
I've always felt, especially for live theater, um, as opposed to filmmaking, but the, the, the blocking, when I direct in the theater, the blocking is always mindful that this is an audience participation sport mm -hmm. because they, when you're in a live theater, participation sport. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, yes. in, in the theater, they can sit, they can look wherever they want. Mm -hmm. You're not directing the shot. They, they can look over here. So your job when, when blocking is, is finding ways to direct that energy along pathways so that their heads move. So they're physically engaged in looking far upstage mm -hmm. or, you know, I was always taught that the, the, the most boring place is center stage, yes. downstage center. You yes. know, you want angles and you want, so dance is the most clear expression of moving that energy, making their heads move in the, in you the just seats. gave me an aha moment. Oh, good. I like that. Cause I, I suck at directing. <laughs> no, I mean, I suck. I like, find that hard to believe. I, um, I, I start like I'm talking about it now and I'm sweating because <laughs> um, they ask me to do it and I'm like no no I can't I don't do that right. they're like but you choreograph I know right. but I don't direct and when you just said that dance is the clearest form of it just went oh <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh god yeah it's it's really oh. remember it's always directing it's you're you're dealing with a ball of energy. Uh, that's like a flamethrower, you know, and, and wherever you point it, that's where it's going. So if if that audience is engaged in the visual picture that you're setting, the more off angle, the more, you know, where you can get a tennis match going in the yes. audience, the more you engage them physically, they can't be pulled out of the piece once they're in it. You know, you got them. Yeah. So dance does that just instinctually. It's just that people are moving all over the stage and they're dancing. But even at a static piece, understanding where to put people so that so that you're breaking lines and you're doing it that's that's all the blocking is so it's fascinating to see uh the physical in, interaction of dance that's what i always because i can't dance a lick so it's fascinating obviously you can no well <laughs> i can i can watch it but i can't i can't dance it that's for sure you don't want to see me dance see i'm italian they expect you to dance they expect me to lay bricks listen i can't do that listen, either so listen i can't do <laughs> they expect me to make pasta so that's what that's all i can do you can teach me <laughs> something <laughs> all right so let's get back to so is this something when you're in school right and you're doing this is this something you're thinking when i get out of here i'm gonna be xyz i'm gonna what were you looking to do when you got out of school oh that's what i like secretly wanted my my mom wanted something completely different what did your mom want um <laughs> Uh, well, look, I'll say this. I would say I'm going to law school uh. and my mom would say, no, be a paralegal. Mm. Like if I said, I'm going to medical school right. to she, be a doctor. Lower the expectation just the a little bit. Okay. All the time. My dad was different. It was, um, you know, what, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I really would love to dance. Well then go do it. Mm. You know, but he also was far away. He was, you know, freedom fighting in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Wow. While I was, you know, at Wellesley Mass. And so, wow. the, so the connection was mommy's the one that I right. had to. So, uh, so when I was there, I would just remember thinking, I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish. Um, and I remember that summer, actually, the junior, my junior year or my senior year, I'd gotten an agent. I started doing a lot of acting and going on, uh, on auditions and things. And, um, an agent, I, I think I went, I, I auditioned for Clueless <laughs> and uh, the director was actually in the room and, and she was like, you're not going to get the park of Stacey Dash, but I want you to call this place. And the director gave me another agency to go to. And she was like, I think, I think you've got something. <laughs> and I remember going home and telling my mom <laughs> and it was, no, oh yeah, I will not pay for that. And I'm like, what? Mommy, the director, the director. And it didn't matter to her. It, it was, I will never, I will never pay for that. You will finish and you will go to college and that is that. And I'm like, yeah. wow. And I remember thinking, this is like the biggest mistake ever, but I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go so let me to ask college. You, let me ask you this question. Um, all through your youth, NDI, into mm -hmm. the, the performing arts school, were they encouraging? No. So how did that, how did you, they just did it because you wanted, how did you do it? How did you get in all this? My things? mom, to her credit, my mom was left to take care of three kids on her own. Uh, Dad, like I said, freedom fighting, 
out there, wow. you know, um, and so mom worked like two or three jobs to, to support us. Right. So a lot of the time we were latchkey kids, you know, sure. we, especially at that time, like in the eighties, uh, uh, my older brother, <laughs> you, you, you know, I know my older well. brother, you know, he would watch us. Um, we lived in Harlem. The community was our family. Right. So they watched us. We grew up in that community. Um, I went to all girls boarding school. So I was, I was very protected in that gotcha. way. Um, and then from there, I went straight to college. So there was always right. like a protection. NDI was, like I said, the family where I was allowed to actually take a look at, you know, this is what you love. So just do it. And I was safe to do it. Right. We had families that would take us on the bus or on the right. train so that I would get there. So sure. that was the support. My mom sometimes didn't even know that I was going on like so, rehearsals. So, well, interesting. At all. So I was going to, so, so mom is protecting you mm -hmm. that's that's her job that's what she's doing right right you know, uh, even if it's right. da dampening some dreams but was she aware of like did she come see your stuff did nope. she no kidding not until um like i said a lot of the time i didn't even tell her because i knew right. that the answer was going to be i have to work mm. and so i didn't even want to hear that right um, so the support came from the NDI families, wow. um, staying over their houses sometimes wow. so that we could go to, I mean, I mean like literally when I say that, 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 like I tell them to this day, they saved my life and I saved my life. Mm. Um, cause I could have gone completely <laughs> right. a, a whole, and at a point I did, and it roped me back in mm. like the arts saved my life wow. being connected there. But um, I think my mom finally saw me perform at the age of 30-something. Wow. And I'm 46. Wow. <laughs> um, and she was like, oh. That's what you've been doing all these years, God damn Yeah. It. <laughs> like, oh. You, you, you know? told me you were taking the bus to the supermarket. I'm like, what the no, hell? mommy. This is, why, this is why they kept, you know, kept me, you know, always doing this. They're like, oh. It was one time. Wow. But she's still, to this day, it's, you should get a real job. <laughs> you know? Is that, was dad, I know he was off. Did he ever get to see any of this stuff? I sent or? him videos. He, sent he, him was, videos. he was supported from afar. He was the type of person, it's, he was an overachiever in a lot of ways. So he wanted his children to also to, to, to mimic that. Right. It's like, just shoot, whatever it is you want to do, make sure that you're the best at it. That's, right. that's, that's, you said he was thing. a diplomat. Yeah. He, and um, what, what's the freedom fighting thing about? Well, I, ca I call it that because he, uh, he was recalled from our country, uh, Sierra Leone to go to Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to try to work with a faction that was getting Mandela out of uh, jail, jail at that time wow. from Addis Ababa. So he was, he was work working also to try to connect the African That's nations. Incredible. It was so th that he, he passed away in the, the coup attempt in my country. But again, it was one of those things where he was, he was someone who believed a hundred percent in something. Sure. So that also is something that, that I have gained from him. When was that? How old were you then? Oh, Oh, Gosh, this was like, I want to say 2000. All right, so two, about you're 29, 30, something like that. Just about. In the 20s. Yeah. And uh, do you think, uh, was he was he proud of all the stuff you did? did yeah. You, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, she lo you loved the videos? Absolutely. Stuff? That's great. Absolutely. Like every, everything was just, come look at my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. So, yeah. That's so awesome. Good. So you get out of school, you, 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 Write your lip and you go to college to do to study what what did you end up doing um i studied i, I studied um gosh i was minor in women's studies mm. um history major okay with the idea that i was going to go to law school that was the idea going that to was law the school. idea okay um and it did not work out actually uh Pop passed away and i was in 98 because that's actually when i left that's okay. when i left bu um not because I wanted to. It was just, just to be candid, not following my dream, not following what it was I wanted to do. I fell into using drugs and alcohol and, and absolutely just, just you die inside when if you're you, not yeah. living a hundred percent. This of, is another of who recurring you're to be. theme of all these artists. Is, is it, it really? Is if you don't, if you deny that truthful thing, as yeah. difficult as it is to go do it, yeah, it's gonna kill you. Yeah, it's gonna come back and yeah. bite you somewhere. So yeah. yeah, I can, I can, I can understand. It's a hundred percent true. Hundred percent true. So, did you say Boston University? Mm -hmm. I went to BU, uh, nineteen ninety three, and I would, I would, uh, like work a whole year to save up money, mm. and then I would take a leave of absence, and then work another year, wow. save up like so, just back and forth, and then finally, 
I left, came back to New York City. Okay. Um, Culturally, uh, was that any different? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> not, no. not Boston University, no. What? Yeah, right. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so you're, you're getting the full-on wave of, uh, of Massachusetts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but I, I wouldn't, I, again, I would not change a lot of um, that part of the life, too. Because I joined SFA, um, which is like their School of Fine Arts. Mm -hmm. They had um, this course that I took. It was, I wish it was a major but they had this course that I took where it was like choreography. So I, I joined other choreographers and we created art. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was a saving grace. So I was able to actually stay there and just keep dancing. And then that introduced me to Tufts University where they needed an African dance teacher mm -hmm. for their, you know, their black student union. So they hired me, you know, as a college student choreographing there. Um, but, so, you, but your mom loved that. Oh, she had no idea. <laughs> no idea. Shh, nope. <laughs> nope. Um, so, yeah. So just, and that was another connection to maybe this is something that I actually could do because I'm making some good money. Right. Teaching. Yeah. Teaching right. and choreographing. Um, and it was, it was um, art with a voice. It wasn't just, oh, we're going to do not knocking any any i work for dance studios right now and and i love the dance studios that i work for um and a lot of the teachers that i work with that i'm really strongly connected to their art always their voice is important they always want to say something they mm -hmm. want to yeah. leave the audience with something right. um so that's what i'm connected to and that's what around then my voice i just wanted people to hear what was going on this right. is what's happening in africa this is what's happening here in this in this place and so a lot of my art was connected to that so the black student union at that point at tufts university that's what they wanted they wanted someone that had a point of view um that was in line with theirs but also had an outside perspective coming right. from west africa true um so I, I just wanted to say that because sometimes... yeah we're, well we're gonna we're gonna return to to the United that States. voice we're going to return to that voice and what you want to say <laughs> so <laughs> as, much. as i move on here so much but i'm just going to cover some uh, one thing that i skip but uh, that i miss what, what's your relation with the alan ailey thing did what did, did you dance well, with that company when or? i was oh no i wish i did i was gonna say I wish i danced yeah, with the company but you had some i had classes, classes. i uh, danced theater harlem and alvin alvin ailey uh, ndi actually got me a scholarship uh to uh dance theater of harlem and um, and then they were paid for me to take classes. And what kind of stuff were they teaching you there? Oh, a dance theater of Harlem and Alvin Ailey. Yeah, yeah. Oh, What's that? African dance, uh, modern. Modern dance. Um, and again, the modern was modern started for me at Alvin Ailey and dance theater of Harlem. Right. I didn't understand what it was <laughs> um, until I got to okay. high school. Okay. I don't understand what it is. So, <laughs> so you know, you know, <laughs> what is it? Ballet. Okay. Structure. Right. Ri well, I'm going to say rigid. Please, for right? my small brain. Right. Yes. Modern, free. Okay. Anti all of that. Right. Free. But you still need to have some sort of... Frame. Frame, there. exactly. Modern is, is I, I want to say, the revolution right. um, from ballet. Allowing yourself to express through... Uh, so the Martha Graham through Bob Fosse type stuff, oh that's gosh. what we're talking about. Yes, okay. yes. F Fosse's more jazz, though. Jazz. Okay, all right. Well, he's that's, jazz. That's different. Yeah, all he's right. jazz. That's okay. different. But Martha, yes. Twyla okay. Tharp. Twyla Tharp. Right. Yes. Um, oh, my gosh. Dance Theater of Harlem. Alvin Ailey. Right. Alvin Ailey um, and uh, Dance Theater of Harlem, they use some African earthy movements though in their modern dance right, right. but you see the ballet lines you see all of that right. in there as well which which is what makes them those two companies so interesting um which is why i think um ndi um had me take classes there because i'd see people like myself right um do you find you, you mentioned that uh you, you can see the african movements and some of the alvin ailey modern mm -hmm. stuff but now with all the different things that you have uh uh, studied and accrued and, and become uh, uh, such uh, talent at, do you find them different pieces of different things drifting into the different ones? Like, are there elements of tap that creep into your modern? Are there elements of... Into my... Absolutely. Yeah, like, like how, do, how does that... Absolutely. absolutely. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with Catherine Dunham. She's another modern um, I know the icon. Name. Okay. okay. She's someone who is credited with bringing African uh, style dance um, and... Haitian style dance into the modern world and, and putting it on the forefront where people now are looking at it and like, 
this is extremely different and it's beautiful. Mm. So yes. And, and she, she is a lot, she's a lot of my technique in modern is what I use from Catherine. Um, I absolutely take tap and I'll put it in there. Mm. I absolutely will take um, some, even some ballet lines and put it in there. Right. And I, I cross my eyes. I know. Yeah, right? well, ballet is great. It's left, left a tough taste in your mouth. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, I also know that there's a place for it. Because yeah. um, without some of uh, the foundation, you will hurt yourself. Right. Absolutely. Right, you will hurt right, yourself. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm a dancer that loves to mix genres. Mm -hmm within um so that it everyone gets an exposure to it sure. so that everyone everyone it's accessible to everyone right and there's there's value to every one of these techniques and the more you can melt them together i mean you'll know as an actor uh because you're an actor as well mm -hmm. and an acting teacher as well but uh i mean one of my favorite actors of all time is anthony hopkins Ugh. and here's the one guy who's i think exemplified they all do it now but he was one of the first that really exemplified the the classic Royal Shakespearean training, which is like ballet, mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. structured and meeting it because you have to, uh, and mixing it with sort of the, the modern uh, post-Russian American, you know, Stanislavski method mm -hmm. stuff and putting those two things together and you get one of the greatest actors of all time. So it's, it's good when you can kind of mix these things together. Have you seen um, oh, Christopher Walken? Mm-hmm. Coriolanus. Have you ever seen? I, I, no, I, did. I haven't seen his Coriolanus, no. In junior high school at East Harlem Performing Arts, they took us to see Christopher Walken mm. in Coriolanus. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away. <laughs> I had never been someone that, you know, was, oh, I, I wish I could be a Shakespearean actor <laughs> until I watched that production i know it wasn't just him it was also right. the, the, the directing sure. but they said and that's it, a violent intense <sighs> you know they everybody said, chops everybody up in well that that, <laughs> right I'm, I'm in junior high right yes um they said it in a time period uh like like they were mafioso basically oh, okay perfect and <laughs> just what he brought to that mm -hmm. was what you're talking about it made it accessible right. kids from harlem um from El Barrio, which is where you know our school was, uh, they understood what was going on right. because of the way that he gave us, sure. the way that he fed us. Well, he's a dancer too. I know. <laughs> he's a big. He's a tap dancer. Dun, yeah, dun. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Yeah. So I, I just, I just feel like the the more open you are to the arts, the more open you are to centered in your craft but the right. more open you are to allowing other things he in was, he was talking to you he was saying oh yeah yep. i hear you you're great you're amazing <laughs> stop playing games <laughs> where'd you get this guy he what he said let's dance babe <laughs> let's talk you being you <laughs> yo that's really good <laughs> like, like i had to throw once you bring up walking i'm throw sorry <laughs> lovely lovely um, so that yeah so that's that's the that's the beautiful thing <laughs> I won't do it anymore. No, you can. You I, can at all times. Um, Please do. Uh, but yeah, that, that's the thing. If you can, if you can understand that there are no borders in all of this, and the the more you liberate yourself, yeah, you keep it in the frame. You tell the story. You stay on the story. But you liberate your soul to express it all different ways. Yeah. You know, you can talk to people different ways. So well said. Well said. So. So now you're, you're, you're teaching for the first time, right? And yeah. we're talking about Tufts and everything. Um, are you, is there a particular, is there a particular part of teaching that you're falling in love with? Is there something that you discover about the instruction and the inspiration to some young kid that, well, or at, some other kid that you, that you're feeling now? Well, at Tufts, I was, I was like the same age group as that. Oh, okay. All right. Because I was a student at BU. Right being hired uh, by their student union. Right. Um, but what I found, none of them had taken dance. I, I think there were maybe three that had taken dance before. So I thought I was coming in and just choreographing, you know, little right. few 16, 32 counts, maybe. Mm -hmm. We don't know, 32 eights. <laughs> um, and it ended up that I had to, in the very beginning, before we did any choreography, I had to give them some sort of a, a base. Right, that's right. Um, so I had no idea about that because I was I was a choreographer. Sure, right. Um, so then it just became 
I need to reach back into what Adrian Hawkins actually taught me back at, um, at uh, Dana Hall, the way that she taught our African dance class. And I still to this day use everything that she taught me um, in terms of starting as a beginner. Mm. Whether you're a beginner or you're an advanced, that's right. you have to go back to the basics. That's right. And that's actually what I, I still to this day tell people. Like if you stay in the basics, you never have to go back to them. Absolutely. So I, I go back to her over and over right. again. Um, and it's in every single warm-up um, so that's what I used. So once I started with that structure, right. I knew then that they weren't going to get hurt, <laughs> right? Because that's first and foremost. Like, just I, I don't have a, the type of ego where I'm like, oh, I'm so good. I've been doing this throughout this thing. No, no. Like, my fear is always that I'm not going to give them enough of a warm up, enough right. of a base that they will get hurt. Sure. So starting from there. Right. Um, after that, when it came to choreography, it was let's start just with what we did in the warm up right. and let's just repeat that but in the are beginning. But as you're doing this, is there a different feeling in you? Now you're instructing and well, you're seeing res result. What does that feel like for you? That didn't happen until at the end of the actual production, watching <laughs> all of it. Because mm -hmm. when I was in it, it was more the, I don't know about you as an artist, but the judgment of self. Oh, well, that's right? always constantly fighting. Only that. me. Only me. I'm the only one, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So um, while I was in it, it was more just, okay, good. Oh, good, you got it. But not really connecting right. that I was encouraging mm -hmm. um, people. It wasn't until afterward that I was just like, holy <laughs> things I can't say. You right can say now. whatever you want. I'm like, holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. Like, that, like, she looks really good. I can't believe it. Like, right. well, like what? He right. did, you know, like, it was afterward that that the aha moment came. Like, I could do it. Like, I, I can do this. Like, right. I really could. Right. Um, the scary thing, though, was in that aha moment, it was the maybe I'm not meant to, to be a performer oh, at the same exact right. time. Right, 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 right. And that was like, that was like, whoa. And, That's and, interesting. And, and I was, it had to be one or the other. I couldn't believe it. Mind. Yeah, hmm. at that very moment, I was just like, huh, hmm. right? Because you always, you always hear, and I think about, I think back to it now. I remember hearing those who can't teach. Yeah, right. right? Those who can't do teach. Thank you, thank you. Right. Those who can't do teach, and I and I remember hearing it over and over again, but it never really penetrated. Right. Um, so later on, as I looked back at that moment, I was like. Oh, I was allowing that moment, sure. that That's, that, that phrase, latter part yeah. of it, to actually navigate the rest of. Right. Um, which is so dangerous. Yeah. No. You know? I mean, yeah. You got. But that's what was happening. You were just. You were letting that phrase from your somewhere you heard it somewhere just creep in. Well, what I love about what you talked about about the basics there, because I, I taught acting for a while, and I love I love teaching. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't done it in a long time, but I, I loved it. I used to run a little studio and. What do you love about teaching? Exactly that is is the. Because I taught sort of a basic scene study, basic, you know, understanding how to create a character and all this stuff and just basic stuff. But my theory was that it's all basic stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had people who had done tons of stuff mm -hmm. and people who had never acted in their lives mixed in the same classes because it's it's. It, it, we're going to get rid of your baggage for the people who have had all this. Baggage. And then the other people have none. And often they were the ones who had the biggest breakthroughs because they had no you know, other technique baggage that they were bringing in. But my, the idea is that, you know, the major league baseball player is taking the same batting practice that you're taking. It's the, yeah. the, 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 the technique yes. is the same. Yes. It's at a, you know, the, the repetition of it creates a higher level of proficiency, but it's the same thing. That's right. So what I loved about it were those moments, uh, in classes where you go, they got it. Oh, you got it. Oh, did you see? See how that felt? The truth came out in that moment, and mm -hmm. you never saw that. And, and you could see they never saw it before, never felt anything like that before. The rest of the class felt it. Those the, When the truth is revealed through craft, yeah, uh, that's super exciting. And there's no more clear revelation of that truth than in a classroom situation where somebody's feeling it for the first time or seeing it for the first time. And we're it's, witnessing it. Yeah, and that's right? why I was asking oh. as a teacher where you're like, wow, they got it. Yeah, that came later. It. That yeah. came oh, much that's later. Cool. That and, came much later. <laughs> and it still happens for you now? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, now I can actually, now I, those are the moments, like you were just talking about, those are the moments that, I don't know that I look for them, but they're the moments that are the most rewarding when they happen. Sure. Um, it, but it, it's also, I walk into a class hoping for it. I right. walk in with that, with my heart hoping for that 
like, and I say it, please let me touch some one body today. Um, even, even if they don't all don't get it, if one somebody gets it, you know, then mm. it's, a, it's a good day. Right. Um, and it, it happens a lot more and more with the little babies, like the little ones. <laughs> sure. Because they're, they're the not least the, the judgment, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. The judgment. The, yeah. you know, we artists, we just, we just do ourselves a disservice, like beating ourselves up in, in the middle of our breakthroughs. Well, there's no, there's no way around it because it, 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 the, the idea is to minimize it to the smallest degree. Minimize that, it. I mean, that's why the people like the, the Brandos and those people of the world were so good is because from one moment to the next, from one line to the next, they had they were on it. Mm -hmm. They hadn't judged the last thing they said. So the more the more you can minimize that judgment, but it's always going to be there because you got to navigate yourself through the world. It's a very difficult job as an artist yeah. because uh, you're trying to create something that is unreal, make it truthful, but at the same time, you're there kind of controlling the little robot to make sure you don't fall off the stage or <laughs> step on the fire that's going to blow out of the that stage. That's supposed to happen. Yeah, yeah. So you're doing a lot of different things. So it's this constant push and pull of the, uh, the ego and the, and the, and the heart going through. Um, but we do. All right. We, 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 yeah. Yeah, we're, we're getting, some of us do. Well, some of us, we get better at it as we go along. Um, so, are you, are you, at, during all of this, as you're getting out of school now, let's get you into your, your adult life and you're out. Are you getting to perform? Are you doing, are you getting to actually, because you said, uh, uh, I'm, now I'm a teacher, am I stuck? Mm -hmm. Am I not going to, do you get to perform? Late, yes. Okay. Yes. What kind um, of things do you get to do? Um, when I came back to New York City, um, it wasn't until, I, I'm trying to like, it wasn't until I think I moved out here to Long Island that I actually started performing again. Before that, friends would be like, aren't you a dancer? Can you, my party, I'm having a party. It's going to be an outdoor lawn thing. <laughs> Can you do a modern something for me, please, for my mom's birthday? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay, sure. You know, like those things. Right. But uh, not back to stage. Um, a friend of mine, when I moved back from, from BU, a friend of mine, she uh, is a director, a producer, and she started her own company and uh, she started doing like some film things and some stage things in like small cafes. Mm. So she'd be like, I know you're an actress, but can you also choreograph something for me? And, and I'm like, sure, I can do that. And she's like, but can you also be in it? And that was the start of me doing both. Right. Um, uh, Club Groove down in the city and uh, was one place and, and being connected to there and then Joyce Soho, uh, we would rehearse in all of these different places in the city that were dance places. Mm. So I started connecting with other dancers. Um, so I'm teaching and then I'm also being asked to perform. Right. Um, so then it was, well, so maybe I can perform a little hmm. bit here and there but i still need to make money <laughs> and there wasn't making money you right. know just performing so i started doing both um and not really paying attention to the fact that you know you may not be able to do this as a career it was like you know what why not just try right like why not and do you feel does it do you feel comfortable with that now in your um, life do you feel like where you're where you're at with the you know it's like i wish i could perform more yeah hey well i know that I well i'm at a, i'm at a point now where that's like i wish i could perform more right. before it was like i'm terrified to go back on stage <laughs> um i actually went back to school and to get a theater degree and where i was forced to go back on stage and you know cast in lead roles and i'm like oh my gosh why am i doing this to myself <laughs> um and i think the most comfortable was always when I'm dancing when I'm performing, right. not when I'm acting and perf and dancing. So yeah, all right. Uh, it, this is interesting. So, um, when did you first get introduced to acting? It's all all as a child, early. All right. As a so, child. so you're acting all the way through. Um, what do you what do you see as the correlations between the two crafts? I mean, do you do you see similarities? Do you do you, do you find, absolutely find things that you enjoy about both that are Yes. One is, is my, is my haven. That's dance. Mm -hmm. Um, because I can be whatever character I want. And mm -hmm. I know that sounds crazy because that's what they say about acting, but for dance, the judgment isn't there. I'm most comfortable, um, connecting with the audience through dance. Hmm. 
even though, and I feel like my strength as an actor comes out uh, more and easily um, as a dancer. I'm told that I'm pretty good at acting too. <laughs> Again, do you see how I'm I'll kind of... I'll take it a guess that that's I'm probably like, right. Eh. Yeah. Um, and, but that's where I find like most of the judgment. That's when I'm in my brain. Sure. As a dancer, I'm so free. Well, my guess is that uh, language, mm -hmm. actual language, mm -hmm. verbal language, and, and the, the text, Ugh. the more you have to engage this part, yeah. this part isn't... That's where the judgment's going to come. I think so. That's probably why. I think so. Um, uh, it's so much fun. Oh, yeah, sure. It's so much fun. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> it's terrifying. But communicating with that audience, it's freer yeah. with, with dance and more direct, probably. Yeah. More, more direct. Yeah. So, um, so let's talk about one thing you said before, which I want to explore now uh, at this stage where you are now, is you said you want to be able to say something mm -hmm. through the art. Not just, it's not just about technique. It's not just about putting on the show and creating the picture. You, you want to say something. And I'm always about story. Mm -hmm. You know, it's plot I could care less about, but what is it about? Mm -hmm. What's the story about? I don't care if it's cowboys or space people or what. What's the story? So what are the story you want? What do you want to say through your art? Oh, so many things. Let's pick one. <laughs> There's so many things. I, I mean, if I were to say, um, to connect to like one thing. Or at least what's like speaking right to you now, right now. Right now, what's yeah, speaking to me Yeah, we're moment to moment. Civil, we're doing some Meisner here. Civil unrest. <laughs> right. Um, civil unrest, not being able to communicate um, civilly. Right. Um, and, and I waffle back and forth between um, communicating civilly and what that means for a black person as opposed to communicating civilly and what that means for a white man. Right. Um, and, I, and I'm specific about white man because sure. I know that women, period, have their own, right. their own issues. Um, and just, just the idea that something that seems so basic and um, something that seems just commonsensical mm -hmm. is not for right. for people right it's an, and it, i'm like amazed by and i'm trying to figure out how um in my art this year i can i can be clear with your uh, <laughs> be clear without without uh stabbing someone <laughs> right um right. like i want to say you're stupid Right, um, right. But that's going to stop the conversation. Right. Well, here, here's, 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 right. A, here's my thought on that. If I could interject my, my white man thought. Please do. Even though it's not a white man thought. It's an actual thought. <laughs> uh, I think all of this stuff, like I said, uh, and, and I've said this in, in different ways before, everything stems from either love or fear. Mm -hmm. Okay. So love and fear are sort of your base elements. Out of love comes ecstasy and bliss and joy and blah, blah, blah. And, and out of fear comes anger, hatement, resentment, you know. But if you drill down to all of those things, all of the, the resentment, the anger, the nastiness, the whatever, it all goes down to fear as a base. Something is making somebody afraid of something. And all fear is existential fear. Mm -hmm. So they're afraid of dying in some way. And as a result, these other things come out of that, these lash outs these resentments these us and thems these whatever because mm -hmm. they're afraid and and so the so the only way to dampen those things is with the other column is some sort of return to a love-based uh, uh approach it's hard to say that in a time of righteous anger mm -hmm. because righteous anger is like a drug you know it's like chocolate or cocaine or something it yeah. feels good because you're you're getting that 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 anger out because it, it needed to come out it needed to be said but ultimately and that's fine but ultimately the only way to ultimately root out that fear on the other side is to get back to a love-based approach so i would say that at least what i'm trying to do through my art is to uh, is to break the bubble mm -hmm. of fear that's uh, get, break through that bubble of fear and find empathy with why I don't have to agree with it right. clearly I don't agree with it but there is a root fear of the unknown an existential fear of some kind that is causing all these other things to happen and if I can find some way 
to allay that fear, to take the edge off that fear, the other things fall like dominoes eventually. Uh, but that's the... <sighs> I'm in agreement. The issue, though, for me is we've been doing this for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it was, I, I want to get into the how, right? Like, sure. how do we do it? Well, how? Well, I think you get, I think what you have to do is you look at how it's, why it's spreading now exponentially that all this time of being in this place that we're in, it's worse, Yeah. right? One is technology. Absolutely. And what's happened is this, you know, this little screen uh, creates these echo chambers where I don't have to, you know, when we grew up, you know, the radio station and MTV and whatever played mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Now, I got my own little niche. I don't have to ever listen to ever anything else. There. I don't have to ever look over there. I don't turn on channel two, four or five. I can go to Fox or uh, MSNBC and mm -hmm. I get just what I want. Right. Period. So I think there's, I think there's a science fiction solution to this. You know, it's like an independence day, you know, when there's a, the mothership and has all these little drones and everything, <laughs> you have to send a virus <laughs> up into the mothership <laughs> da -dung -dung. to not to <laughs> it's, break. It's happened. <laughs> so we have to approach it that way. We have to, and it, this is the tough part. I think we have to we we have to be the ones that are the responsible ones to reach out to the other bubble. You have to break through the other bubble because they're not going to. Nope. And that's the tough part because again, like I said, the the anger in us, the righteous anger of of the injustice that we see, is like, well, th I I shouldn't have to do that, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But there is a way that I think there's. You have to get you know, inject the the love virus yeah. somehow. I don't know how, <sighs> but we're artists. I hope we can figure out how to do it. Yeah. And I guess my question to you is, regardless of my theory or not theory, let's get back to what you were saying, which is telling a story through art. What in your specific craft do you do? Do you do it? Would you do shows? Would you do like yes? Like what? Put on pieces. How does that look in real life? Well, in the the dance studio world where I teach, like about two years ago, um, when uh, another black person had been killed in broad daylight, um, one of the things, and and it, and also just there were a lot of things that were happening with black women and mm -hmm. just with women and young girls. Okay. Um, so I had this. Um, I was like, I need to say something. What is speaking to me the most? And it happened at that time to be my teenage girls. These teenage girls, they're, they they want to look a certain way. They're um, they're starving themselves, or they're you know um, anorexic or bulimic. You know all these things, all these issues that I actually dealt with as, as a as a young girl. They're killing themselves. Mm. Um, they're being bullied. They're not talking to um, just social media. So I created a piece in my contemporary uh, class that was around the students that I was teaching. That was the age group, teenagers. Mm. Um, and it was called, it was actually, uh, it was Hillary Clinton's speech, All the Little Girls. Mm. Um, I took that and I cut it to, um, to a point where it spoke of all of the things that they, because it did, it spoke of all of the things that they were going through. So I created a piece that spoke to that and um, had someone come in and teach them sign language also. Hmm. Um, so that in the piece, we discussed what was going on. In the piece, we used another medium that also was inclusive. So inclusivity, not diversity. Right. Inclusivity right. was extremely important. Uh, for that year and then also having the girls create or the young ladies not girls mm. create for their own piece their own artwork so each of them took poster board and wrote down like i'm like in your school the things that are going well first and foremost having the discussion like what is bullying mm. um what are the things that happen you know in, in the dance class so it's not just again it's not just the technique right. it's like it's like life skills what do I want my students to leave my classroom with? Um, I enter a classroom with that idea every single year, every single day. What do I want them to leave with? And what I wanted them to leave with was being empowered. Ugh. Mm. Was being empowered as young women 
and and turning off the noise like the I call it Congress, you know, the committee is always yes. going. So being, being able to shut off the committee for even a second so that you can be your own best cheerleader. Right. So in that class, we used one of the classes uh, for them to just take the post board and use whatever colors they want. And they could just write. And one girl said, I'm worth it. Another mm-hmm. one wrote, um, you're worth it. Another one, just whatever it was. Right. And at the end of the dance, they each got to lift up what they created right. so that Rosie could see sure. it. And that was the point. So still connecting everything that I teach, right. um, everything that's important to dance, everything that's important to theater, but making sure that their voices were heard for that year. This year... I'm trying to figure out how to do the same with right. what's going on. But there's so many things right. that um, are speaking to me that I'm just finding a quiet moment to to let it drop in. Right. Um, it's sometimes hard. I also have two kids. I have two little girls. Uh-huh. You know, their father passed away um, going on almost two years. Mm. So I'm raising these two yeah. little girls on my own, wow. a five and seven year old. And it's important to me, I know it's connected to, to them. It's mm-hmm. important to me that my voice has something to do connected to them on right. a larger scale. Well, I would say that, uh, I would say this ties into the, uh, the judgment part as an artist, that if you can remove the, the part of you that says, let me think about how to do this mm-hmm. and just do it, physically express it especially as a dancer, I think, I think you're going to bypass some of the Congress in your own head and get to this. I didn't know I was going to have therapy today. <laughs> Ed, I didn't know. This is like a blessing. Miss Oya session, didn't, right? Miss Oya didn't know. Okay. Go ahead. No, keep, please preach brother. Please. I'm just saying that I, 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 I find that if <sighs> that the, the quickest way to get to short circuit that, you know, that thing is to, is to get into physical action and, and, and get into the, you know, it's like writing stream of consciousness where I don't know how to approach a a script. If I'm going to write a screenplay, just start going, get on your feet and they'll talk, you know, and it's the same thing. And I'm curious, what do you think? Although I think I'm touching on it a little bit. Why, what do you think is the, is the specific thing about dance telling these stories? Like, is there something for those girls that they're getting out of that that they wouldn't get out of, you know, a debate club or whatever, you know, or like, is there something specific do you think the physical part of dance does? It's, it's the physical part of dance and also the classroom setting. Right. Everything that I learned from NDI, I bring into my classroom so that they're and it's the safest space that they will find in their day. That's, mm. that's it. And they know that they can be, they can be jerks when they come <laughs> in. They're allowed. And I tell them that they're right. allowed. We have, we have language also that's created in there. Mama hoo hoo. What you is can, that? You can be as mama hoo hoo as you want with Miss <laughs> Oya. But when Miss Oya does focus, electric, you jump back into it right. and we're back. So we can play and right. we must play. Mm. And that's, and I, when I say play, I mean through dance. They're allowed to come in and bring their TikTok. <laughs> And all that, so they can bring all of that into it because teachers always tell them, stop with it. No, bring it all in. And then when we focus, electric, we jump back to it. Right. Um, so they know that it's the safe space, first and foremost, that has to be established. And it's not just me for them, it's them to them right. because they can be their worst enemy to each other. Mm. Um, so, so, and I don't allow that. Mm. Like, that's just not allowed. Like, that's where we don't play um, at all. But then, through dance, like I said, they use the TikTok, you know, <laughs> all of them <laughs> memorize TikTok movements, but will not memorize any of my contemporary right. stuff. Right? And they memorize the TikTok movements at 150% energy. Right. But if I ask them to give me high knees in contemporary or Afro beats, <laughs> right? Or to give me some crispy fingers, it's, I'm like, why am I fighting with you? Um, so, Letting them see the connection of that, allowing them to actually do some of that movement in the class right. first, and me putting whatever text it is that I want on top of those movements okay. that are accessible first, so that then now I've roped them in, mm. and then I peel, we start peeling all of that stuff away right. to get to, you know, this is what we want. Um, what do you want, though? And that's the other thing, is being able um, 
to give them the technique so that they feel confident in, enough. I work with recreation students and recreation versus competition. I don't know if you know anything about, okay, good. No. Um, I'm trying not Competition to. is like you're, you're specifically focused on. Right. Competition, you're focused on specific movements that are going to be judged, judged in, in competition. Points, yeah, right. There you go. Um, my recreation students, recreation is you're, you're, rec, you're coming into dance. Right. You're just coming into dance. That's it. Um, and I love working with them because they don't have to worry if their toes are not pointed every single time. We will get there. Right. Um, they are given the opportunity to get there. I'm not going to keep, you know, like, like mm. I remember the teacher always tapping like my butt. I'm like, it does <laughs> not go in any further. Like this is, <laughs> this is it. This is what you're going to get. Um, and, uh, so being able to understand that this is what we're working with, but then language with them, mm. what do you want? Like, what are we going to work on this year? Right. Uh, setting goals for themselves. Like what is something that you want to learn from me this year so that we can make sure we put it into the dance, mm. um, allowing them also giving them choreography, uh, moments where, all right, next week, eight counts based on whatever movements we did in our warm up. You have four movements that I taught you today, put them together any which way that you want for eight counts next week, you're going to show us. Right. So th they don't have to worry about, I have to, I have to make it up myself. You've already been given the movements, right. move them around. So being able to, and, and they don't, what they don't realize is that they're learning language that way. They're also taking ownership of their own dance. Right. It's not my dance. Right, right, right. It's their dance. Right. So inserting whatever they give me, I don't care if it looks current. Mm -hmm. It's going to be in the dance. You know, I'm curious. Do you think, uh, to return back to the very beginning, when that ballet didn't speak to you because it wasn't presented to you properly uh, with love, um, do you think that, uh, that this craft in particular uh, can break? And have you seen it break some of the cultural barriers ballet like, or or the things that i do dance oh dance 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 in, with all your technique everything you make can, mm -hmm. you, can you see applying these different techniques to actual human beings learning it do you see do you see a little of that wall breaking down yes do you, are you optimistic about that i am i okay. am um like like you you had said i can't dance and it's a word <laughs> that we don't use can't it's a dirty word i'm sorry i, I apologize yeah, I will tell your mother. I will tell, I will tell whoever's in charge of you. Right. I'm going to tell. Um, and, and I say that in class. Uh, you, you know, um, I also taught at the YMCA, and we had the students make signs that says, like, C-A-N-T, we don't use that here. You know, like, <laughs> all around the room, sure. it's a dirty word. Right. It's, I'm not able to do it right now. Um, I'm working on that right now. Right. I can't, I'm not able to do that yet. Right. Trying to change that language, even though it's just words, mm -hmm. it's just words, but the power that you, that you give the life that you give that one word, like as you know, it, I navigated most of my life based on that one, mm -hmm. that one teacher right. and what that one teacher told me. So that power that we give that word, um, we remove it. Okay. Right. So you can dance or so, you know, All right. good <clears> to just know. so you know, that's good to know, but, um, pretty excited about that. But <laughs> <laughs> and that actually is that actually is a is like a challenge. It's it's a happy challenge. Yes. When I hear one of my students, I can't do that, Miss Loya, and I'm like, oh, but wait, can I do it? Mm. Yeah, but oh, so wait, if I can do it, gotcha. like, am I better than you? No. Oh, mm. all right. I'm just saying. You said you can't. Mm. You said I'm better than you. I'm just saying. You know, just. Yep. Being, being able to turn that around so that their language changes in the classroom, but then changes on in their own life. Right. So, Miss Oya, let me ask you this question. Yes. What uh, What is the cant that you're getting around for yourself right now? For myself? Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, I like him. <laughs> I do. Be no, because because so listen. <laughs> So listen, what had happened was <laughs> the can't right now, um, oh, I have this business that I've been trying to get off the ground. I have these two partners um, and it's basically everything that we're discussing right now, right. going into the classroom um, in this time, going right. into the classroom and giving students 
who don't have access to dance, who don't have access to, um, it's called Project Move. Okay, I like it. I like the title. And um, it's, we are trying to create leaders of tomorrow, right, um, that are also going to give back to their community. Mm. So we have um, Stephanie Patoko who does hip hop, using mm -hmm. hip hop as the voice. We also have my other, my dance stuff, but we have the hip hop as the voice. We have Miss Nula also at my other, at the studio, who does costume design and costume craft, teaching them just whatever you have here. We're going to use this to create a costume. Mm. So whatever materials are around, that's what we're going to use. Because who has money to buy? <laughs> right. 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 We're going to unstitch this. Gotcha. We're going to unstitch this bitch and we're going to make a costume. Right. Um, and then also being able to use my theater background and my dance background, all three, to create something. So mm. the students are owning their craft. They're learning choreography. They're learning also um, theater and 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 dance also and then they're also learning how to make their own things mm -hmm. then they take it home hey mommy look so this is what miss nula taught me right, right. so who can afford gucci <laughs> not, right. not looking at me but how about we try to make our own stuff with what right. we have right. and I'm, I'm sharing that because um our idea was to bring that into the school system no school is gonna let us in right now right. i have two children mm. they're young and um, everything is just, I probably have to wait till they get older. Right. Well, Miss, Miss Oya, I would say that it's just not there now. What is the phrase? Oh, <laughs> damn. No, he did it. <laughs> we'll drop that. We'll oh, just drop no, that right he there. Did it. <laughs> but it's, the, it's coming because it I'll is. tell you what, everything I've gotten it from is. you in this, in this brief time we've had together, and I appreciate <laughs> every minute you've given me, is that. The things that are necessary most in the world right now uh, will only be provided and solved by people and artists like you. It's the only way. Mm. Like I said, it's the only way to break those bubbles is, and, and cross those lines is to have somebody who understands what they are to begin with Ugh. and then reach across. So uh, before I let you go here... Uh, where can people find, like, is there websites and stuff? Or wh where do people find you? Do they, where do you, they teach? Like, is I'm, there something that pe the audience should know where to find you? I'm everywhere. But <laughs> I'm, I'm um, Stage Door School of Dance. Stage I'm Door. Stage Door School, school of, of Dance. Dance. Monday nights. Mm -hmm. I teach adults as well. Okay. Um, I'm at Theatrics Performing Arts. Okay, that's out of the East, right? That's, um, we're at Holbrook right now. Okay. And that's every other Sunday. Um, I'm at Tillis Performing Arts Center. I bring a class to little pods to people's <laughs> homes, but we're also in schools via zoom. Um, I'm at theater three doing online stuff for them. Right. Um, oh my gosh. Project move ny.org is our company that we are going to make happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Going to make happen. We're right. doing things now. Um, yeah, and hopefully the YMCA Bayshore will open up again for dance. Like that's great. That's, so you're you're just spreading it everywhere, I'm all, all over, over all over the place. I'm all over. Well, I appreciate you stopping by here. This was awesome, and uh, I oh, wish I, you, it was my pleasure. Uh, this was great. I this will. is also very uplifting. I needed this. I didn't realize. Good. You know, so I, I need. I feel I, needed I feel it. good about that. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> well, it. Well, you, you taught me a lot, and I'm sure everybody else out there learned. So thanks so much for uh, for coming by. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Thank, Thank you, you, Ed. Thank yeah. you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs>